All right, let's continue learning a little bit about that file reading. Um, the actual reading code, not too bad. We saw in the last video that all you have to do is create a file reader, a buffered reader, and basically just use a simple little while loop to boot through, reading line after line after line after line until the file's done. But we had mentioned that this was a little easier on us because we had done this all inside of void main. And there was this little thing I had added in here but didn't explain, throws exception. So here's the problem. Sometimes when people make a class, especially a class that let's say works with files, there's a high potential for problems to occur. For instance, maybe you're trying to read the file and all of a sudden the disk drive breaks. The disk drive breaks, you try to do this read line command and it's not going to work and now your program crashes. Or maybe you try to open up a file here. When you make your file reader, you give it a file name that doesn't exist. Problem, right? So the rest of the code's not going to work, and you get the red lines, and your program crashes. So some people, when they write their classes, to sort of make them a bit more error-proof, is they do something called they throw exceptions with their methods. Now I'm just going to take this out and show you what happens to our program. It'll take a few minutes here to explain what this is all about. But you'll notice the red lines. Unreported exception. File not found. So the person that coded the file reader class, they've coded the methods in a way, uh, something we haven't learned yet, that actually tell us that a bad error could occur here that sort of devastates your program. And it says we're supposed to somehow take care of this. You'll see down here, read line unreported exception input output exception this has to do with maybe it's not possible to read the file for whatever reason must be caught or declared or thrown All right so you have these little warnings now I had taken care of it by doing this by just adding throws exception this is one way you can take care of it if you say throws exception it's like saying hey just to let you know this method void main possibly throws an exception and if you want the definition of exception you can look here on the uh, Java website basically the exception is short for an exceptional event okay usually something bad right so some exceptional event has taken place so when we go back here this works I've taken care of it this technically satisfies any of these procedures or methods here that might throw an exception or cause an exception, they've technically been handled because the method that they're in has said specifically, hey, this method might throw an exception. Now, here's the problem in your own classes. In your own classes, um, well, let's just show you what happens. Here's a simple reader class. And just want to show you how to take care of these exceptions when you're coding the file reading inside your own classes. So here's simple reader. I've made a method called read file. And I'm specifying that it throws an exception, just like my void main from the other program, right? I'm saying, hey, this might throw the exception because I'm using a couple commands here and here that may cause trouble. Let me show you the runner. The runner of this class, so remember this class was called simple reader, and the method is read file. So I go to my file runner. Notice what I have to do. I create a simple reader, SR. This is what I have to do to use that method read file. And I know you're looking going, what the heck is this about? Just bear with it. It'll make a little bit of sense by the end of the video. But because this method read file, because it states that it might throw an exceptional event, you can't just run it by doing this. So let me type it without the try. SR read file. You'll see I get the red line unreported exception must be caught or declared now when I pop back to the Java page this is pretty well what you have to do you have two choices you can either declare 
that the method is going to throw an exception, or you have to try to run the code with the try statement. And you'll see that's what I'm doing here. This doesn't work. The method might throw an exception. I can't just use it. So what you have to do is you have to do a block of code like this one that's shown here. You say, please try to do this code. And you put the code inside the curly braces. So I'm saying try to do sr.read file. Notice no red lines. But the trade-off is, is you have to say in the event of an error that takes place, so if an exceptional event takes place, catch the exception. And don't worry about this. They actually give you a, an exception object with the error information. And do this code. And you'll see here I'm taking sort of a quick uh, uh, short way out. I'm just going to go system out. Something went wrong reading the file. You can even just leave this line blank if you just want to do nothing. But it's always nice to at least you know, say what you were trying to do. I was trying to read a file. Yeah, something went wrong reading the file. This statement, these try and catches, always go together. It's always, hey, try to do this code that might cause an exception. If it goes well, perfect. Just continue from here. Or try to do this code, and if it causes an error, catch the error and do this code. So it's a little fail safe. Now, some people don't code the exceptions in their uh, methods in their classes, and you don't have to do this, but you're going to find that a lot of classes in Java do throw exceptions, and you have to do this. So this is one way you have to do it. Now, this way is a way that I'm not particularly a fan of because this simple reader class that we made here, a class made to read the file, you want to make that easy to use for the user. Now this was quick. Throws exception. And the trade-off was when you go to use that method, you have to try to use it and catch the error. Check out the second way, which is similar, but probably a lot better. I've made another method called read file2. It virtually has the same code in it, but I've just rearranged a little bit. Notice. I don't throw an exception. But what I do do is before I try to do the buffered reader and the file reading code, I put all of that inside of a try. So try to do the following. Basically my entire file read. And if there's errors, catch the error. So this is good. I'm still satisfying the requirement of trying to do the code and catching the error, but I'm doing it all right here inside of my method. And yeah, it makes it look a little bit ugly, but notice the difference. I don't have to add the words throw exception here because I've handled it all right in here. It's all self-contained. So in my runner, notice the second use of it, so much easier. Hey, SR read file 2. I don't have to do any try and catch there because it's all handled inside the method itself. So you'll see both ways done sometimes. I personally would suggest code your code this way. Look at how much easier that is to use, right? Somebody using your class now just uses the one line, none of this messy stuff. So that's sort of the basics there. Um, what more can we say? Does this go over people's heads a lot when we uh, start learning it? Yes, it does. Um, it's a little bit different, right? Why coders would code uh, things to make you do this extra work. But remember the basic idea. Whoever coded this file reading class, they wanted to make it so that if there's problems, they know guaranteed you've at least considered handling the mistakes. And by making their methods throw exceptions, it forces you to either try and catch, you know, the errors, or it forces you to at least notify the next person that's going to use your class that the method might cause some exceptional error events to happen. So, you know, there is a purpose to it. It's supposed to sort of make code tight and indestructible and handle all the bad cases that could pop up. So, hopefully you can make use of this, right? And that's not too bad. And remember that the second way, Probably the best way. 
Anytime you got to handle code that throws exceptions, just put it inside the try and use the catch. Thanks for watching.